All right, in this video, we're gonna go through the Betaflight filter sliders here, give some PID tuning advice based on a log review, talk about some other things like D-min, I-term relax versus racing versus freestyle. We're gonna talk about a little bit about TPA and give some analogies of how you can think about the P-term versus the D-term of push versus dampening. So the set point is our commands into the quadcopter. It is, it is everything. I mean, that's the only way the quad knows how to fly. There's nothing else it can track. The set point is what we were commanding it to do. And last time I checked, what we want the quadcopter to do is exactly what we're commanding it to do. So if we can exactly get the gyro, which is the reading of what it's actually doing, to match exactly what we're telling it to do, you can't get any better performance than that. Now for looking at the PID tune, what I generally do is go to Trace Setup 4 and I will turn off the exaggeration because I'm not so interested in the noise anymore of the, the traces. I don't need to, to see that. And I want to generally look at the set point tracking. So the set point is our commands into the quadcopter. If that gyro trace exactly matches the set point. So if we're looking at the roll axis here, the, the set point is the green line from the, the sticks, the gyro trace is what the quadcopter is doing. If we can get this, this dark blue, I guess it is, I don't know what color that is, but if we can get that to exactly follow the screen line, that is perfection of what, you know, how the flight experience would be on this. So you can see it is pretty darn close through here, but we are giving some overshoot back and forth here. So once you get this overshoot like this and this wobble, you should be thinking immediately, you have too much push and not enough dampening. If you are seeing the, the gyro signal not follow, so it's not wobbling back and forth in like a sharp, you can see right here, we're going into a sharp roll. You know, it's kind of, if it's delayed here and then there's no overshooting at all up here, that means you probably have too much dampening. And when you're starting to move the sticks out, the gyro is kind of sluggish and it's and it's delayed. That's because the the pid loop's not pushing it enough to follow the set point. So there's you're over dampened and not enough push. In the new tool tips in the configurator, we try to bring this back to a something that's a little bit more layman's terms. Think of the P term as the spring on your car. So when the tire moves up, you know, from the road moving up. The, P, the, the spring will push the car to move up, okay? The, the road is the set point, okay? So as you go over a bump and it pushes the, the again, the wheel to move up, the car is, is gonna move up with it. If the spring is really weak, that means when the road moves up, the car will move up, but it will be kind of delayed in time. If the spring is very tight, it means as soon as the road moves up, the car will move up. Now, inside that strut of a car, you have a shock absorber in the middle. And that shock absorber, if you ever grab those, those resist movement going out or going in. They just, they have hydraulic oil in them. They just resist movement no matter what. That's the D term. So what happens in this scenario? You have to have the right amount of spring versus the right amount of resistance in the shock absorber. And that's a balance, the balance between those two, even in your car. So when the, when the road moves up, the spring moves the, the car up, but the shock absorber is strong enough that as that, that, that spring starts to get to its, its end, that it doesn't overshoot and make the car bounce. How do you know when the shocks on your car are bad? Well, you go up to the side of the fender and you push down on the side of the car and if the car goes down, comes back up and kind of bounces up and down, that means your shock absorber is bad and you need to replace your shocks. You know the spring's bad as if the car just kind of falls down. Uh, but so it's the same thing with the P and D term. If you're, you know, making abrupt changes and your, your quad is kind of bouncing, that means you need to replace or increase your D term. Uh, if you're making sharp moves and it's kind of sluggish and it's not, you know, following the set point very well, that means you need to increase your P term. Now there's another factor called feed forward we're going to talk about in a little bit. So hopefully that helps with this uh, understanding. So back to looking at this, you can see we have good set point trackings. That means that the, the, to me, the P term and the feed forward, those are working well together, but we have a little bit too much overshoot going on 
here. So let's uh, let's try to address that. It's not so bad. You can see it's the wobbling back and forth here. If I turn on, see how if I have the expo turned on, you, you can't see that as much. So there's some conditions where you want to turn the expo off when you're looking at the set point tracking here. And kind of just browse through here and get a sense, what do we generally see? Do we see things are latent or do we see things are overshooting? And I'm seeing things are kind of generally overshooting. Uh, you can see it here as well. Here you can see it kind of oscillating back and forth a little bit on the set point. So to me, that's the PD balance is off. If we take these settings that we see in the, in the log here and kind of move the sliders around to match it, we can get a sense of what the slider ratios kind of are compared to what the numbers are here. And you can see the 42, 45, not exactly, well, that's exact match. And uh, 27s for the, the uh, D term. So that's gonna be here, 20, this is 25, 27, pretty close. 15s for the D min, 15s right here. So we're pretty close and then it's 80 and 90, so 81, 86. So the, the sliders aren't gonna give you the exact numbers. You can't, you know, we tried to make them so that, you know, this isn't, we're not splitting the atom here, guys, with these, these gain numbers. So these are close enough. That's essentially how the, this current PID tune looks on the new Betaflight sliders. Now, looking at the sliders in general, what do I recommend doing? And, and this is one of these things that's going to be a, tr a little bit of a trial and error. We're going to, you know, give them those, those filter settings, say, put that in there. Pretty confident about that, that that's kind of done after that point. But the PID tuning is a little bit of back and forth trial and error and make sure it's looking well. We do have to keep in mind that when you are in a sharp move or in prop wash, these the D gains, basically we have dynamic D gains when you have D min enabled. They are, when the quadcopter is a smooth forward flight, it is down at D of 15, 14, which is pretty low for a five inch quadcopter. When you're doing a sharp move, they'll spike up to 25 and 26. But as soon as that move is, ended as soon as you kind of got to the peak of the move like showing right here that d goes back down so this oscillation is because you're down at the 14 and 15 again already so those are too low to me same thing with prop wash dynamic d term will will move up to these higher d gains but it it's not for the first wobble in prop wash because it has to detect the wobble even exists so that takes some time uh, it's just like you know if i throw a brick at you you have to first detect it's coming with your eyes before you can move and do something about it. So that detecting and moving, that's your reaction time. So there is a reaction time. It's in milliseconds, which is hundredths of a second. But nevertheless, there's still some reaction time. So that D term being that low doesn't help you for like that first shake or so of prop wash. So we want to move it up for kind of two reasons because of the wobbling we're seeing and also to get better prop wash handling. So ultimately this is the slider configuration I would recommend for this gentleman to try next. It would be set these to defaults and then just move up your P to D gain both at the same time. So your demon gains are at 32 and 35. It's really I would just look down here at the slider position. If this, I'm using these numbers because I'm used to those, but eventually, hopefully, we can just be used to working and talking in sliders. So 1.6 on your P to D gain uh, increase there. We're basically doubling our D min gains. So a little bit more filtering over here would be warranted. And I, I really wouldn't worry about these D max gains. Those happen very instantaneous. They're very short amount of times. And there's usually when the D min, when the D gains are being boosted from these D min gains up to the D max gains or the derivative gains up here, there's usually stress on the frame. And if you look in logs, you'll see whenever there's stress on the frame, your noise, like the ambient noise or the, the shakes on the frame goes in half or, or a quarter of what it normally is. The amount of push here, we'll have to see how it looks uh, with this balance. You know, we might need to further adjust this PD balance. You know, we might still have a little bit too much push. So we'll, we'll go from here. The big thing I wanted to do is essentially get up, you know, get our D min gains up to what I feel is an appropriate number. The other changes I would make here is I would take the D min advance, change that to zero. I would just round this up to 30 for the D min gain. That seems to be a, a good gain that I've seen 27, 30, it's kind of all the same. Set point is beta flight's default, usually a little bit better for racing in, in sweeping turns. So if you are racing, maybe give set point a shot 
Um, so the advice for beta, you know, from the beta flight and from the devs, and uh, for freestyle, I would probably recommend Gyro at 10, but knowing you're uh, racing. And that's about it for the PID tab. Going to the rate profile tab, we can see we have the TPA at 0 0.6, and it starts at 1250. Uh, 1250. Uh, that could go up, I guess, if you want. I mean, I, it depends how sensitive you are to prop wash. I would just leave that for now, uh, make these other changes. I believe the default is 0.5 at 1500. So you're, you're starting that transition a little lower, so it's gradually reducing D gains. If you wanna get a little bit better prop wash handling, one of the things I would do before we keep moving D gains up is um, is move this up because you know we're kind of fighting against our set. We're moving D gains up, but then this is lowering D gains as soon as you go above 1250, which is 12.5% of your throttle, it's starting to reduce your D gains. At 100% throttle, you're at 35% of the D gains. Depends if you want to hit on prop wash harder or not. I would either leave this alone or mess with this some more if you want prop wash to, to get that tuned out. Okay, well that is it. Hopefully this gave everybody some good tips on how to look at some things with black box logging and also how to integrate uh, the new PID sliders and filter sliders into your tunes. Uh, and how you can kind of translate things across and how you can tweak and just some general PID tuning advice and filter advice. Thanks everybody. I hope this helped.